Hello everyone and welcome back to Reentry and Orbital Simulator. We are in version 0.9995.earlyaccess and the notes to version 0.999 say that it is one of the last updates before the 1.0 milestone but that's one of the last updates so I don't know how many more digits we have to go but we'll see. I assume it's going to uh, have a full release at some point if 1.0 indicates that. Previously, I had done the training missions for Mercury and Gemini, so I have completed these, it should say completed. I had done them before, like years ago, but they have changed things, and so I did them again because I wanted to update myself based on the changes, and like the way that maneuvers are done in the game are completely different, so uh, we did those uh, earlier on in the year, I think. But I didn't get to the Apollo ones because, well, Juno came out and then KSP2 came out and they got sidetracked. So uh, I would like to do the tutorials for Apollo. I had done them before, but everything has changed. There's been many, many updates since I did the tutorials last time. It has been years. So I'm going to go through them and we're going to see how they are ahead of potentially the full release of the game. I do not have track IR uh, active right now. That may or may not be a good thing. Uh, we will see after this lesson. If it turns out that I think I need it, I'll turn it on. Uh, but we'll try it without it. And uh, they are working on VR capabilities here. And it would be a good game for VR, but I do not have VR. Okay, welcome to Apollo and Launch Complex 39 here at Cape Canaveral. Many systems are still in an early implementation stage, so keep, in, keep this in mind when completing the Academy and Apollo missions. Really early implementation? Uh, okay, I mean, it's pretty thorough, right? <laughs> anyway, maybe that's uh, leftover. You are now sitting inside the Apollo Block 2 command module. It is attached to a service module where most of the major life support equipment is installed. The command and service module combo is the primary Apollo spacecraft. It is sitting on top of a 111 meter high rocket named the Saturn V, whom, whom is currently being prepared for launch. Okay, well, the Saturn V personified. The CSM is a highly sophisticated spacecraft with both manual and automatic systems that are designed to take you safely to the moon and back. Hold down the mouse wheel while dragging the mouse to look around, or in case you have configured the input, use your settings. Uh, use the arrow keys and page up and down to move the camera manually. The primary source of power are three fuel cells with batteries installed as backup or during high power demands. The command module can host three astronauts, each with a primary duty. In this simulator, you assume control of all systems. The left seat is the commander's seat. Use the view menu or press F5 to set the camera into the seat. So I guess we'll, ooh, let's not click anything else. Left hand seat, or we can do F5, F6, F7. Uh, its primary view is the attitude controls, early mo monitoring and sequencer control. The middle seat, is the command module pilot view and has easy access to the computer, um, the disky here, uh, environmental controls and attitude controls. Okay, and then the right hand seat, the lunar module pilot seat, has view of the electrical systems, radio control, and SPS engine configuration panel. So all these things, and some buses and circuit breakers there are much more there's there's much more to each seat but this is a general description f9 will move the camera to the left seat window and f10 will move it to the right seat window keep in mind that you can freely move the camera using the arrow keys while holding the middle mouse button well i can use the arrow keys without holding the middle mouse button doesn't matter either way. Okay. The command module has a very sophisticated general purpose computer and is seen in the center or left panel. Uh, F11 will move the camera into that view. 
Most of the panels and controls are illuminated with both floodlights and fluorescent panel lights controlled from the left side of the left seat, panel 8, and right side of the right seat, panel 5. Uh, oh, here we go. Here are the lights. Okay. Each panel is numbered to make it easier to locate switches and controls. Yes. <laughs> Very important. Panel 1, and then the, uh, maybe they'll talk about that. Now most of the systems have already been set up for launch, but there are a few important steps you need to perform. Using M you have access to the mission pad. Okay. From the checklists menu in the mission pad, look at the pre-launch. So checklists. Mm, pre-launch. Launch preparations. Checklist. It can look quite daunting. Yeah. But in real reality, it's quite quick. Well, yeah, it's quick um, in comparison to some of the other checklists. I assume you don't touch anything on any of the panels unless you really know what you're doing. <laughs> they, they added this comment just for me. Almost every switch is functional and will configure a system. The first thing we need to do is to run program 1 on the Apollo Guidance computer located on the main... Uh, display console 2, panel 2. So, the computer is operated by using verbs and nouns, each is identified with a numeric code. Run program 1 on the computer, so press verb, change the program running, you used uh, use verb 37, and fine, 3, 7, click enter, and then it's flashing, indicating it's waiting for more input. This is the noun. When you press enter after inserting 37, it automatically knows you will enter a noun. So then 0 and 1. And then enter. And now it's on program 1. And... That's what it says up here, IMU alignment if necessary in first verb 37, uh, E01. I wonder what it, why it's E01 there. Oh, enter. It just wants enter. Yeah, okay. Verb 37, enter, 01, enter. Right. Um, program 01 will align the inertial system and automatically run program 2 when ready. While program 1 is running, the FDAI on the main control panel will roll to the correct launch attitude. And that is what it's done. Program 2 will fine align the inertial systems until liftoff. When the rocket detects that it has released from the launch pad, the AGC will receive a signal and automatically run program 11, the boost program. Program 11 is critical for the boost phase, so if for some reason program 11 won't start, you will have to do this manually. As we are discussing the AGC, I'll explain how now, but this is usually a later step in the boost preparation checklist. A shortcut to do this exists if this is uh, exists if this is detected and is done through verb 75 enter. Don't press anything yet, but what this means is that you'll need to press verb then 7 then 5 then enter to commit the AGC command. It is very hard to press anything on the console during launch as the vibrations are on an extreme level. It is important uh, to prepare for prepare this before the countdown. To do this, you will not you will just before launch enter verb then seven and five, but not press enter. If for some reason program eleven doesn't start when you are released from the launch pad, all you need to do is press the enter button, and we will do this soon. Now that program 2 is running on the computer, we can now continue with the boost preparations. First thing we need to do is to distribute the electricity among the 16 reaction control system RCS thrusters. Look on panel 8, a long horizontal set of switches uh, named auto RC RCS select switches. Uh, this can connect a thruster to either main bus A or main bus B or disable it. I don't know if I should keep the checklist up here. Um, these are grouped into what a given thruster is assigned to do. First two groups are all thrusters used for rolling, then the third is for pitch, and lastly the fourth 
is for yaw. Verify that A1 is off. It's in the center, so it's off. Uh, C1 is off, yeah. A2 off, C2 off. B1 set to M and A, main bus A, and then main bus B, and then main bus A, main bus B, and then main bus B, and then main bus A, main bus A, main bus B. At last, the YAW group verify that it is set to A, B, B, A. So yeah, we've got some of the role control. We don't use the first set for role. And then the rest we've got some for role, some for pitch, and some for yaw. Let's also check battery C. Battery C is important and is used for many of the important electrical systems during the fa during failures. Rotate the DC selection knob, so you have to get to this seat. Um, that's F7. And DC, uh, battery C is important and is used for... Blah, 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 blah. Uh, rotate the DC selection knob to MDC3. Uh, oh no, on MDC3 to battery C. There we go. And check that the voltage is 37 to 37.5. Looks like it to me. The voltage of the selected DC source can be seen on the DC volts gauge. Rotate the DC selector knob to main bus A. That's main bus A. The FDAI is used to set, see your attitude. Oh, we're going over there now? Okay, well, I guess we're leaving that. All right. Okay, FDAI is used to see your attitude, error, and rates based on a stable platform. The one on MDC1 should now display a pitch of 90. Uh, 9. It's upside down, but that's 9. Maybe they should put a little underline on it. But anyway, the 6. Well, yeah, and, uh, six. The context indicates that that's 90. A yaw of 0. Uh, that's the big bold line there. And then a roll of 90. Um, I don't know exactly how that. But anyway, uh, close enough. Uh, the FDAI scale is 5 over 5. This is how sensitive the FDAI will be. And hold on. Okay, we need to set that. So down. Okay, and we will now enable some maneuvering systems so they are easily usable in case of an abort. Set the rate to high. Rate high. Okay, I guess that's high already. I guess that's why it's not highlighted, it was already in the right position. Enable the translation stick by setting the trans control power to up. It is already up. Set the rotational hand controller direct power 1 to main bus A or main bus B. And same for number 2. And set the command module computer mode to free. It is already on free, that's why it's not highlighted. Then we'll set the B mags to rate 1. Leak. Rate 1. B mags are used for backup attitude source and for angular rates. Set B mag roll rate to 1. That's what we've already done in the last for pitch and yaw. Okay, then we will do an Astro Launch Operations voice check. Set the Lunar Module Pilot S band switch to off. So that's over here off. Set the commander VHF AM switch to off. Use the communication menu to do a radio check. Oh, they've got, the, they used to have communication menu with uh, the buttons at the bottom, but it's its own menu here. Okay, so that we have done. 5x5, five five, lunar module S-band switch to transmit. And Commander VHF AM switch to transmit. So all this stuff is in here. There's uh, see, there's the DC check. You know, checking the voltage, FDAI scale, rate high, the controller, 
uh, the me B mag and what we just did the astral launch operations voice check um, then the voice check with uh, mission control is next yeah so do another radio check okay now ensure the service propulsion system engine is set to off by first verifying that the SPS thrust switch on MDC one is normal and so that's that one and it is normal it's very big and hard to miss and that the two delta v thrust switches are off so they they're definitely off because otherwise they'd highlight them but where is it delta v thrust these guys uh, well they have little special covers on them so um, if they're off, they'll be, the covers will be closed. Okay. Verify the APC in switch is set to A. Uh, this one, it's alpha. Uh, uh, it says A there, but it's alpha there. So that is set to alpha. Okay. Check that the EDS auto two engine out and LV rates MDC two is up or auto. Oh, up here. Uh, two engine out, and that's already on auto, and then the LV rates is already on auto. Okay, thrust vector control servo power number one, and that is to main bus A. And that one is on main bus B. Okay, well, the fuel cell is way over there, so let's move over here. Fuel cell reaction valve to latch. This will ensure that the valve is maintained in the set position even during high vibration phases such as boost. Verify the secondary control, uh, sorry, secondary coolant loop pump is off. Uh, well, that's a verify, so it probably is already off since it's not highlighting it. But where was that? Was it the one that was weird in a very odd place? So secondary coolant loop pump could also be in the middle panel. No, oh, here it is. Uh, sorry, secondary coolant loop. The pump is off. Okay, it is off because there's AC, AC2, and then middle section is off. All right. At T minus 4 minutes and 10 seconds. Look, we're ahead of the schedule. The five LV engine lights should come on. Launch vehicle. Indicating that they're armed but not thrusting. Those are here. Verify that program 2 is running. It is. Insert verb 75, but do not press enter. Pull the primary glycol radiator handle on panel 325 to bypass. That, that, that was the weird one. Uh, where was that? I, I, I see the little... Oh, there it is. I was looking for it on the other side. There we go. Bypass. Set main bus tie AC switch to on. And BC. Set the two pad comm switches on the CMP and LMP radio panels to off. Well, I guess they want us to do this one first. Pad comm. Uh, wouldn't that be over here? Padcom, here, here. No, they're not highlighting this. Okay, Padcom off. Then the GDC needs to be aligned with the IMU. This is done by clicking the GDC align push button on the first control panel. Okay. This can be indicated by looking at the second FDAI. That one. And it should show the same total out attitude as the one on control panel one. That one. So they should be the same. Yes, they are. FDAI one is primarily using the IMU as the data source, whereas the 
FDAI2 is using the backup GDC platform as the attitude source. Okay, mission accomplished. All right. Flash down in the ocean. Not exactly, but okay. And mission. So that's how we would launch. Sort of. Boost. So let me. I got credit. Make sure you get credit. Welcome back in. Uh, welcome back to the command module cockpit and the academy lesson two. This time we will test the checklist. Test the checklist? <laughs> yes, go ahead. Let's see if the checklist is up to snuff. Uh, and what you learned in lesson one before igniting those powerful F1 engines and starting the ascent. Again, there are many systems involved, so don't feel stressed if you don't yet understand what everything is. Many of the steps involved are automatic unless something malfunctions. The 111 meter high Apollo rocket consists of three stages that will do the major work to get the spacecraft into orbit. All the work, really. Uh, the first stage is named S1C and is the initial booster stage. It has five engines and has the job of taking the spacecraft above the atmosphere. It will burn for about 168 seconds. The second stage is named S2 and has the primary job of generating orbital speed and navigating the spacecraft into the correct trajectory. It also has five engines and will burn for 360 seconds. The third stage is named S4B and has one engine. It is a multi-start engine and it is designed to have two burns. One is the final part of the ascent and into Earth parking, parking orbit and the burn needed to reach the moon, TLI, Translunar Injection. Now, how do all these individual stages communicate and know when to do what? The upper part of the launch vehicle has the instrumentation unit. Together with the command module, the instrument state instrumentation unit will take care of most of the sequencing and logic. The IU will also control the entire rocket unless you manually override the controls and give the controls to the command module computer. This is only done during emergencies. With all the major components out of the way, let's also take a look at the spacecraft itself. It has a few parts. The uppermost part is the launch escape tower, which is currently blocking my view. <laughs> Otherwise, the window would have the sky. But anyway, um, it is used during an abort and will take the capsule away from the falling, uh, failing launch vehicle. Once the capsule is above the atmosphere, the tower no longer has a use since other escape options must be used and is jettisoned automatically, default or manually in, as an emergency. The payload lunar module is located inside the S4B stage, inside the spacecraft lunar module adapter. It is protected by panels and that are removed during the S4B staging. The service module will follow the Paul capsule for almost the entire flight and is separated just before re-entry back to Earth. Anyway, let's dive into the launch preparation procedures. Use M to see the mission pad and follow the launch preparation checklist. Well, we are quite familiar with this one. Okay, you can use the run feature that will have a marker to guide you through the steps at, that are in the wrong configuration because they won't highlight it if they're in the right configuration. So verb 37, enter, 01, enter. And then we do the little RCS thrusters. So just uh, keeping in mind what they should be. The first ones are off and then main bus A, main bus B, main bus A, main bus B, and then main bus B, main bus A, main bus B. Oh, oh no, main bus A, main bus B. And then main bus A, main bus B, main bus B, main bus A. Okay, and then over here, check our battery. Okay, battery looks fine. Back to main bus A. Okay, and then we check the FDAI. No, it looks the same as before. Alright, so we check that. And then the FDAI scale is in the center. Uh, that we have on both buses. These, um, well, they should all be rate one. So let me just get that. that. Okay. And then the S band off, we'll do the radio check. So S band off. 
and then S band, not at S band, VHF off. And then perform the radio check with C. Okay, and then we get that response. All right. So check and then, well, we'll, we know we'd have to get this back onto transmit as well, but then we go over here and do transmit as well. And then do a radio check. Okay, and that's that there. Right. And then back over to command receipt, we have the, uh, well, they already have the stuff in the right position, but we check the SPS thrust direct on and the alpha slash PC is on alpha and EDS on. And then the other stuff is already in the right position for the abort system. And then the RCS command is off. And then the TBC, thrust vector control, servo power, that one on main bus A, that one on main bus B. And then on this panel, we have that on latch. And then we go to the disk key and prepare verb 75 about pushing enter. And then we go to, the, they didn't mention this part, um, go to the lunar module pilot thing and then start the tape recorder. And then we go over to commander seat and set that primary glycol to bypass. And then on panel five, that's what the little five on the checklist there says. Um, name bus tie ACBC. And then the pad comms go off. So off. Off. And then push GDC align. Oh, let me just check. Uh, yes, uh, FDAI 2 is not right. We push that, and then it is right. Magic. Okay, now we've got 18 minutes left. <laughs> so, uh, we will time warp. Okay, they pulled us out of time warp. Uh, T minus 4 minutes. Do not enter, yes. We have verb 75 standing by, yes. So we've done all this already. So we're gonna be on boost. Okay, two minutes to launch. Yes, program two is running. I'm waiting for the umbilical disconnect signal. Once the countdown reaches T minus nine seconds, the ignition sequence is starting. Prepare for a lot of vibrations. Once the ignition command is triggered, the engines will start to build up thrust. Once the thrust is nominal, the respective launch vehicle engine lights will go out. When all lights are extinguished, the engines are performing no I was going to say nominally, but normally. Uh, these should stay extinguished during the first two minutes. The inboard engine central light will illuminate, indicating the inboard engine cutoff at 2 minutes and 16 seconds, and will be extinguished until staging when all engines are cut off. After cutoff, the S1C separation will be triggered, and the S2 will ignite all its engines. The engine lights will once again be extinguished, indicating normal thrust. Okie dokie. E minus one minute. One minute to launch. Once you have liftoff, there are three immediate things you need to check. The, the first is that the five engine lights are extinguished. Then check that the computer switches to program 11 and is displaying data. I'll otherwise press enter so that we've got the verb 75 done. Uh, lastly, check that the mission elapsed time uh, just under the warning lights panel is uh, okay on top of the Okay, that's the warning lights panel there, and the mission timer is that one. Starts counting up from zero. Right now it's counting up from 24 minutes, so yes, we will want that reset. I think we can hide that for now. Internal. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, They actually didn't all do it at the same time, but okay. Um, okay, program 11, and it is counting up from zero. Eight glass cover buttons are... Yeah. Thrusting, yeah, program 11, lock started. Launch vehicle guidance has completed a small yaw maneuver to clear the tower, and then a roll maneuver to tilt into the program direction. Pitch program is running to pitch into orbit. Yep, it is. 
we did roll uh, because we were tilted initially and it's rolled into this uh, yaw, zero yaw line. Abro Abort mode 1A complete, mode 1 Bravo has started. Uh, there are a few abort modes, each with different abort procedures. These can be read in detail in the manual. There is a long manual. See, set the propellant dump on MDC2 to RCS command in case of an abort. Monitor something frequently while passing the atmosphere until... I guess that's two minutes mission elapsed time. Cabin pressure uh, should be decreasing at 2.3 nautical miles altitude. Uh, where was the cabin altitude again? <laughs> It's somewhere. I see acceleration in G's. Computer is displaying some data. Yes, it is. The inertial velocity, R2 is displaying H dot, the altitude rate, the change in height. And uh, R3 is displaying H pad, altitude above pad radius. Mark, Mark, mode 1, Charlie. Max Q is the point of maximum dynamic pressure. Yeah, we've entered mode Char one Charlie. That's EDS off. Engine two out off. And launch vehicle rates off. Inboard engine cut off. And yeah, we've got light five there on. Okay, all will illuminate soon when we stage. All right, pretty good. The tower will be jettisoned, so I get my view. Oh, I think I see something there. I mean, from this angle, it looks like I have a view out, no, doesn't it? That's a little bit weird. Oh, no, it's gone now. Tower is gone, but now it's a real view. But there was a sneaky sort of weird view in there, too. Okay, so we switched the Alpha Thingamajiggy to PC. And manual attitude pitch to rate command. Oh, I did the wrong one. We still got ways to go on the second stage. It is six minutes long. So yeah, one of my main interests in making sure I know how stuff works like this is because I do have a tendency to design my own spacecraft and eventually I'd like to do very complex interiors. Now, of course, these days everything would be on touch screens and everything, but the functions are still the same. You know, like the comms functions, the RCS, setting it to this or that. Uh, sending things to one bus or another would still have to be possible on the touch screens as well and ba basically all the functions that we have here would have to be possibly accessed in any spacecraft regardless of how they're accessed and of course in the shuttle there's even more but I would love a shuttle simulator I'm sure a lot of people would but that is really complicated to program this is bad enough but yeah, so when thinking about how to get a uh, spacecraft interior set up, it's good to know how everything works, or ought to work. I do wish this, whatever this thing was, was not in my face though. <laughs> I'm gonna move myself down a bit. Okay, yes, inboard engine cut off on the second stage. Yeah, I would love to, like, create a manual for a spacecraft that I myself designed. That would be nice. Okay, we're close to the end of the second stage here. Okay, we have our final stage here. Final bit to orbit. All right, we have cut off. Write down. down the data from the registers. So, like, notes, intertext. So, B1, 
I'm gonna just put that. Um, R2 is H dot, H dot, <laughs> uh, negative 00034, and then H pad, H pad. I, I think there might be some other place to note these, but this is okay too. Oh, six five. Okay. Key release is flashing on the computer. That's that light there means it wants to display data, so release the keyboard and let the computer control it again. And it'll display more data. This is the initial orbit. The guidance vehicle is still in early development, and as with the real rocket, the achieved orbit can be different. I mean, actually the real rocket often had more lopsidedness than this. This is pretty close. Uh, what we need to check now is that the orbit is okay, meaning not dangerous. Take a note of the data. It's a little bit high. Uh, R1 is displaying the apogee altitude, uh, R2 is the perigee altitude, and R3 is displaying the time of free fall to 49.4 nautical miles. If the orbit is safe, you can key uh, verb 37 enter 00 enter to let the computer run the idling program poo. <laughs> program 00, which they often call poo. Um, so this is a safe orbit. Uh, anything with both of them above 100 nautical miles is safe. Uh, now that we're in orbit, so okay, fine. I, uh, it's assuming that I, I'm guessing it's assuming that we do this. Did I do that quickly? Operator error. Oh, great. I thought we were good. Okay, verb 37, enter 00. Okay, now it's on the idle program. Now that we are in orbit, we need to perform the post insertion checklist. ECS post insertion. Rad leak. I, I don't know. Well, let's see. Um, Turning off things that we did during boost and things we need active during the initial orbit. So, insertion section. Yes, insertion section. Okay, as an optional step to this lesson, feel free to walk through them and become familiar with the procedures. Okay, that's an optional thing. Well, okay, so we're doing the specific systems after this. So, anyway, that was getting to orbit the pre-launch and getting to orbit part. And then we'll go through the specific systems in the next video. And um, then uh, th these are all maneuvers, right? Auto maneuvering, burn planning, atmospheric entry, transposition and docking. That, that'll be a separate video and then the full exam, I think. I think that's what I'll do. So I'll leave it here for now. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.